this when you see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody, it's a work desk, a Lady Ada. It's me, Lady Ada, and this is my work desk. And uh, I brought out some equipment because I wanted to uh, show you what I did today. I've been testing out a switching power supply, well, switching power supply for use with the Pi 3. Now, the Pi 3, uh, if you may have watched, we did a video where we uh, did some power um, analysis of it doing stuff. And yeah, you can basically draw like an amp of current before you even attach any accessories. So the Pi Foundation suggests using a 2.4 amp, 5 volt, 5.2 volt power supply. And uh, we stuck a 2 amp power supply, but we got samples of a 2.4 amp one and uh, a little bit more amps, 0.4 more amps. Um, but I wanted to test this and um, you know, basically verify that I'm getting the voltage I want under load and I don't have too much ripple because that can you know, affect the stability of the um, accessories connected to the USB port on Linux. So um, to do that, I got my uh, trusty Tektronix scope and I got this BK Precision uh, electronic load. Um, electronic load is one of those things where I see this a lot, but uh, you might think like, I could build one of those for like five bucks with an op amp and a tip 120. You can, but like these things are awesome. <laughs> and they're great when you're doing a lot of testing of batteries and power supplies. So uh, to start off with, I'm gonna just plug this in. Okay. It's plugged into the power plug, and then um, it's connected to a six inch micro USB cable. It's power only, of course, there's no data. And I've got this little micro USB breakout that I don't want to slice this cable apart, so this just makes it easy. I, I plug this on, and then I soldered um, uh, two little pins onto the breakout so I can connect to ground and five volts. And um, you got your scope here, and then you know, just to start, you just want to measure your uh, open circuit voltage. So clip that on. And uh, it says right here, nice 5.15 volts, nice and flat. Um, you know, this is kind of nice because it has this like nice big reading. It'll also tell me, uh, you know, the peak to peak, I think. I can measure that. Um, add measurement. Well, and measurement uh, phase, snapshot all frequency period, rise time, fall time, delay phase. Where's peak to peak? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, yeah, now I got this peak to peak of about uh, 300 uh, millivolts, peak to peak, which is actually really not, not so bad. Um, so let's now connect up our electronic load. So the electronic load is uh, pretty straightforward to use, although this like, it's got this weird off LED, you just gotta watch out for that. And um, basically you connect uh, with the shortest wires you can, because again, you're gonna be drawing a lot of current through this, uh, connect it up to five volts and ground. So now I've got both, and, and this actually does do a voltage reading. So you can use this to measure um, the voltage, so you can see here it says uh, 5.175, which is pretty much the same as what the oscilloscope does. But you know, if you want to see um, ripple or spikes and measure the peak to peak, you really want to get a, a sense. I like looking at the oscilloscope at the same time. Um, okay, so then you can, uh, okay, so you crank this down to zero amps and you turn it on and um, Right now, basically, like nothing's going on because there's, it's not drawing any current. But then you can um, turn this up, and I'm turning this up 0.1 amps at a time. And what's interesting is as uh, I turn it up, this voltage actually is increasing a little bit. Oh, thanks. Um, so starting at zero volts, I get 5.15. 
and then as I in uh, 5.76 over here and then sorry wrong way as I increase this um, this voltage is going up just a little bit so when I get to about uh, 0.3 amps I'm up to 2.5.25 that's okay you, you can have your 5 volt uh, supply be a little high um, compared to like 5 volt proper 5.25 is actually within USB specs and then um, going up to 0.5 amps, 0.6 amps, 5.2 volts. Okay, we're looking pretty good. And then, yeah, thanks for awesome camera work there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks good. Oh, you, can see, you can see this. This is really hard to see because you can tell this is multiplexed. Yeah. Um, let's bring this up slowly to 1 amp. At 1 amp of current, um, you see 5.15. 5.15 so that's kind of good like even at the end of the the long USB cable we're still getting more than 5 volts so let's uh, crank it up to 1.5 amps um, yeah still getting 5.15 uh, the ripple is still you know very low about 300 millivolts not so bad and then let's go up to 2 amps so at 2 amps we do see a little bit of a droop now it's down to uh, 5.06, but still like well above like what the rating we want. We basically want to have uh, at least uh, 4.8, 4.9. Um, you'll notice that at the BK Precision though, it's actually getting um, a lower voltage. Like this is 5.05, this is reading 4.983. I think that this is due to either the resistance from the wires or the internal current sense resistor. So, you know, whatever. I, that's why I use the oscilloscope to measure. And then let's go all the way up to 2.4, maybe 2.5 amps. And um, over here we see uh, 4.982, ripple of, again, only about like 300 millivolts. And this is happily supplying 2.5 amps. So that's pretty good. Like still well above 4.75, which is the cutoff for, for USB. Um, that's like the spec. The spec is 4.75 to 5.25 and then if we want to look at the ripple a little bit more we can go to um, AC mode and then kind of fun to use sorry hold on use this upside down hold on I want to get this to yeah 50 millivolts peak to peak and then You know what? It's actually um, kind of hard to use an oscilloscope upside down. Um, what am I doing? Scale. There you go. Okay. So here you can actually see um, the noise. So you're going to get switching noise on here. That's that's not too unusual. Um, you can measure the frequency even with measure. measurements frequency and measurement um, come on and then let's where's my trigger uh, and, uh, single okay frequency of like I don't know looks like about 11 megahertz or something. I don't know. That's not right. Should be less than that. That could be. Uh, there's probably a sub frequency. Hold on. Looks like 38 kilohertz, which is, sounds about right. Um, but not too bad. You know, it looks like about 100 millivolts peak to peak. So I'm pretty happy with this. And I can also try cranking this up to 3 amps just to see what happens. You're seeing, like, it, you know, the. It does get a little bit um, wavier. Let's go to three amps. That's actually the limit of this. This can't go above three amps, so I can't, I can't test more than that. And then, so many buttons. DC coupling. And then, menu off. Okay. So it looks like at three amps, which is the max I can draw out of this, um, I'm still getting a nice uh, 4.88, 4.9 volts. 
So yeah, you could pretty much like use this to power like kind of everything. It's funny, it's getting a little bit warm from the, uh, maybe from the current draw. But anyways, so after testing this, I know that this power supply will do very well for a Pi 3. So the next step is I talk to the manufacturer and get a quote for you know the thousands that I'm gonna need to get and, um, and place an order and maybe upgrade the current power supplies from two amp to 2.4 amp. Although as you can see, you can kind of do three amps. It's rated for 2.4 amps, but um, it can handle spikes of, of, point, of uh, three amps pretty much without any issues. So that's a nice power supply. Well above the uh, 500 milliamps that we're used to for most of these USB adapters. Okay. Do you want to answer a question? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's repeat it back. Uh, so if I understand correctly, the electronic load is just drawing more and more current so that we can see how well the power supply can handle. Yeah, basically this is just acts like a gigantic resistor, but it's a programmable resistor. So as you tweak this up, it will program programmatically draw more current so you can test it under various current load. So like, it's really good for testing boost converters or linear regulators or, or batteries and seeing like, well, if I actually draw 100 milliamps, how long does the battery last? And it will just sit here and like draw exactly that much current. Okay, sweet. That's my demo. All right, thanks everybody. And that's what I do during the day. Okay.